It's not about winning by spending the absolute lowest amount. It's about becoming very conscious of what you're spending, what you're consuming. And that's all I'm asking is let's just be more conscious about where and why we spend our money in the manner we do. Because at the end of the day, I think you're going to reap a lot of rewards by becoming more conscious of it. Focus on the things that really give you value and get out of the mindless consumption traps that so many of us get into. Don't, don't just go out shopping as a hobby. Hey guys, Matt McKeever here. So this is going to be my January 2017 spending video. So I'm going to break out for you exactly what I spent in the month of January. Just get into the nitty gritty details and kind of open up my financial life for you guys. Now in a previous video, I just showed you a glimpse of what my spending looked like back in 2012 and 2015 and just provide a couple sample months. So if you're curious to see how my spending's evolved over the last five years, feel free to check out those videos. But this video is just gonna be focused on January 2017. So before we get into my actual spending, just a couple things I wanna discuss with you are, first of all, I'm not saying that this is how everyone has to live. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm a single male with no dependents, so my lifestyle expenses are gonna be a little bit different than some other people's. However, what this video is really about and this whole series of videos is about is just becoming conscious of our consumption, becoming really aware of where we're spending our money and figuring out, are we actually getting value from it? Are you actually happy with spending your money in that manner? And is it kind of optimizing the lifestyle you envision or the level of happiness you want in your life. And so with that being said, I'm hoping that we can kind of foster or create here a community of like-minded individuals where this is gonna be a judgment-free zone. Go out shopping as a hobby. Just please, please don't. Please, please, please stop having shopping as a hobby on your internet dating profile. I mean, is, is that like, if it's antiquing or if it's like collecting something specific, but if it's literally just the idea of consuming is your hobby. I mean, I guess that was kind of judgmental, I apologize, but. So I'm hoping we can create a judgment-free zone here where people can just be open and honest with their spending. And at the end of the day, I want people to be able to reach out and give suggestions or support to others, but let's do it in a non-judgmental way. Let's be better than the average internet troll. That's all I'm asking for here, guys. So with that being said, let's get into my actual spending. So here's my expenses for the month of January. Uh, I've broken it out into three columns. If you're curious about why I track my expenses in the manner I do, check out that previous video from 2012 or 2015. You don't have to track your expenses like this. What's important is that you track your expenses in some manner, that you're aware of your consumption. How you decide to detail that, how you decide to report that to yourself, completely up to you. Uh, this is just the way that works for me. If you're actually taking the effort to track your spending, you're already going to be streets ahead. In the phrase streets ahead. Trying? <laughs> coined and minted. Been there, coined that. Streets ahead is verbal wildfire. Streets ahead of 80% of the population. That's one of those small life hacks, in my opinion, where you can make a huge impact on your lifestyle and on your financial journey and on when you're going to reach financial independence by tracking your expenses. So I cannot stress enough the value that you can receive if you do this and if you do it consistently. Let's get into my spending for the month of January. So you can see I've broke out here just cash, bank account, and credit card. So those are the three areas where I tend to spend money from. So in cash, you can see I spent about $323 in the month of January. For bank, I spent $2,900. And for credit card, $2,600. Now that's way higher than any of the months you saw in 2012 or 2015, and there's good reason for that. The biggest reason is $2,000 of that expense relates to my insurance costs. And so that's just my insurance for the full year. So that's $600 related to my home insurance and $1,400 related to my vehicle insurance. So once we back out that $2,000, it gets much closer to a normalized uh, value compared to my 2012 or 2015. And once we back out then also my investments of $2,100, then we get much closer. You can see that we're actually then getting down to about seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars a month in cash outflows, which is way more in line with what I showed you from 2012 and 2015. So the first thing that's kind of cool about this is I can just notice that my spending hasn't drastically changed over the last five years. And what that tells me is this lifestyle is more than sustainable. I'm not actually sacrificing if I'm not feeling like I'm somehow not living a full life. This is my lifestyle. And that's what's really powerful about becoming conscious of your consumption is scrimping and saving 
and sacrificing is great and I applaud those that do it. However, if you're not gonna be able to maintain it long term, it's more of a stopgap measure than really a long term solution. And to me that's what tracking my expenses, being conscious of my consumption all about is all about as a guiding philosophy, guiding principle for my lifestyle. So let's get into the specific line by line items. So alcohol and vices. So I spent just under three hundred dollars, two hundred and eighty bucks on my vices. That seems pretty high, because it is. Uh, it's still comparable to what I was spending in 2012 and 2015, and that's because I've actually consumed less of my vices these days, but I consume a lot more craft beer, and craft beer is more expensive than the dollar of beers I used to drink in 2012. Uh, in addition to that, so the majority of this is alcohol related. $105 is non-alcohol related. I'm still not overly happy with spending $280 a month on my vices. To become a bit more conscious of my spending, I'm going to be focusing on only drinking craft beer for the month of February. And so this is kind of one of those little challenges I used to do with myself all the time when I was regularly in the habit of tracking my expenses. I noticed maybe a trend was starting to drift in a direction that I didn't like. And so I would try and course correct. So in this one, I'm only going to drink craft beers. And so the rules behind that is I'm only going to drink beer if I bought it from the brewery or if it's on tap and it's a local craft beer. So that's that. I spent 70 bucks on my cell phone, is what it is. Just under $170 on eating out. And so that mainly is comprised of pizza. In addition to that, uh, one meal was where I went out and had my accountability meet up with John. That's just kind of part of our rituals to go out and have dinner together. It, uh, I really enjoyed. I get a lot of value from it. So definitely no plans to change that. And otherwise, $16 of that, or almost 10% of my eating out budget, for the month of January related to picking up a tab at poachers from our London on fire meetup where a member must have forgot to pay their bill. They didn't pay for two of their beers and it didn't feel fair to leave poachers in the lurch. So I paid it out of pocket. Before you go congratulating me on what great guy I am, uh, just for perspective, we had two previous meetups where uh, the same thing happened where one person forgot to pick up their bill. It's been a different person every time. I'm sure it's not on purpose, but those first two times, Jeff Weibel, who's not even a founding member of the London on Fire meetup, just a great guy, picked up the bill, but it seemed really unfair to make him pick it up three times in a row. So that's, so I picked it up this time. And to me, that just really kind of demonstrates our whole philosophy, my whole peer group and the sort of people I want around me have that perspective of it's a team sport. We're all going to win together. So you're not nickel and diming each other. There's not pointing the fingers over who didn't pick up their bill last time or anything like that. Uh, so then for groceries, you can see I spent about 190 bucks on groceries. I don't coupon or anything like that. So there's definitely ways that I could become more efficient with my grocery consumption. But at this point in time, it works for me. Uh, I'm not going bankrupt. I'm probably just going to keep it as is. Though if you're a hardcore couponer and you got some great hacks or tips for me on how I can slowly become a couponer, tell me in the comment section because I mean, if there's a super cool app, I've heard some people have some cool stuff. I've just never actually done it or experimented with it. So tell me in the comments if that's you. Then spent 50 bucks on gas. Usually I expect to spend about a hundred. This month I clearly didn't drive much. Uh, medical. So I pay $240 a month for health and dental and travel insurance. And that's just from an old program I ported over from a previous employer. Now, to be honest, I'm probably just getting the same value from it as I'm putting into it. So it's not really creating savings. It's just kind of a weird security blanket for me right now. And I probably plan to continue using it at least for the next few months. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of 2017, I pivoted and removed it and am just self-insuring. But for now, it just makes me feel more comfortable. So I'm going to go with it. As part of that though, only 80% of my dental is covered. So I had $70 out of pocket this month related to dental expenses. I don't owe much on my mortgage anymore. So I only had $153 of mortgage interest. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Stuff. So this was a really high month for stuff. Uh, it's primarily made up of, I spent $180 on a four terabyte external hard drive. That's this bad boy right there. Uh, just so I could store all my video files. I already have like two terabytes on there. Um, probably gonna have to learn to be a lot more selective with my 
video content or start deleting stuff after the fact. Then I spent about $66 on ink cartridges just for my printer at home. To be honest, that's probably mainly a work expense, but at the end of the day, I'd still probably want a printer at home, so I'm gonna call that personal. Uh, $7 in expense at a dollar store for props for my YouTube channel. And actually, that's one of the areas that I kind of struggled at first, whether I should be including my YouTube expenses in my uh, personal spending. You know, I'm undertaking YouTube more as an experiment or a hobby than I am as a income generating enterprise. So all my YouTube expenses, I'm going to consider a hobby. And so I'm going to include them in my personal expenses. Uh, on the flip side of that, however, uh, oftentimes when I have a project property on the go, uh, we'll be working on it on weekends. And so I'll maybe have a couple guys out there or a whole group of guys out there to help me. And I'll be paying them, but in addition to that, just as like a nice little pick me up, I usually like to grab some Timbits or granola bars or buy a pizza for lunch or maybe buy some beers for at the end of the day. You know, these project properties are a for-profit enterprise. I intend to make good income off of them or uh, good capital gains depending on what my exit strategy is. So I'm not gonna include those as personal expenses. Uh, if you feel like that's cheating, feel free to call me out on it in the comment section. Uh, the cost related there is probably two, two fifty a month max. And so if you feel like I'm cheating here, feel free to add that back. But otherwise that just kind of gives you a rough perspective of how I'm approaching some things that maybe blur the lines of personal or business. So then utilities. So I spent $243 on utilities this month. That's hydro, water, and heat. Then 600 bucks on my home insurance. 1400 on car insurance and four dollars in bank fees now i used to be the guy that would freak out if i had four dollars in bank fees uh everything changes with perspective and to be honest at this point in time in my life trying to maximize or game the system to ensure that i'm never paying banking fees just isn't worth the stress and headaches related to ensuring that i keep that twenty five hundred dollar or three thousand dollar balance in my personal checking all the time so i'm not going to sweat it and then finally, I spent $1,700 just related to principal down payment on my mortgage and $400 for building up my drip portfolio. Now, I haven't actually talked about drips on this channel yet, and I plan to do a whole separate video or maybe series of videos on them because I think they're a really interesting way for a layman to get into stock investing in individual stocks. And I'm not talking about synthetic drips. I'm talking about those hardcore old school paper certificate drips really interesting community and amazing community too uh but i'll talk about that in another video this video is about just my monthly spending so that gives you guys a rough idea of what my january looked like i'd love to hear about yours in the comment section down below and going forward every month i'm going to have a guest on this channel and we're just going to walk through their expenses and get their perspective see how they track their expenses and at the end of the day i just want this to kind of be a great portfolio of different lifestyles so that if you're not a single male with no dependents, but say you're a single father or say you're you know a young married couple, I want to be able to show that diverse cross section of our population so that you can find someone to map on to your current lifestyle so that you can quickly see how they're living and maybe adapt some of the strategies that they have. So if you're really curious and seeing where exactly I spent my money, Here's exactly where it was all spent and on the days it was spent. Uh, if you're into that thing, either screenshot it or pause this video. I'm just gonna keep moving. So this is something I normally wouldn't track, but I decided to do for you guys, just give a more holistic perspective on everything. Because remember, what I'm actually tracking here is my monthly cash outflow. So the actual expenses I'm incurring. So things that are yearly or unusual aren't gonna show up every month. So for example, I pay my internet once a year. I pay my uh, I pay my insurance once a year. So those things are only going to show up once on a 12 month cycle of tracking my expenses. And that's why for you guys, I think it's so valuable for you to take just one year and track your expenses and then use that as a baseline to project for future years. And then you can just do maybe two or four times a year, a monthly audit on yourself, kind of the way I discussed in my previous video of my 2012 and 2015 expenses. Because at the end of the day, if you don't know where and how you're spending your money, it's going to be very difficult for you to rein it in 
and it's going to be difficult for you to really start uh, maximizing your savings. And remember, this isn't about sacrifice, it's just about becoming conscious of your consumption. At the end of the day, if that's the only thing you take away from this, that would make me very happy. So over here, we have my actual monthly outflows for the month of January of 3700. Um, we've adjusted by removing my insurance cost of 2000, adding back the monthly insurance, adding back uh, repairs and maintenance on my vehicle of 100 bucks a month, as well as $100 a month and just a reserve fund to buy a new vehicle. Um, then $200 a month in property taxes, $500 in medical. Now this is something that I did kind of struggle with whether I want to talk to you guys about on my channel or not. At the end of the day, I don't see why honesty isn't the best policy. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm not going to delve deep into exactly what this is related to, but just know that based on that health insurance that I mentioned earlier, I'm paying 240 a month, but that doesn't cover all my prescription costs. So I'm actually paying about $500 a month out of pocket for prescriptions. Uh, you know, there's government programs and stuff I could apply to to probably reduce that burden. Um, my views in general are very complicated on socialized medicine. I won't get into that here. I feel like roughly what I'm spending a month to keep myself healthy through these prescriptions is worthwhile. It feels fair based on where my income level's at. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll dive deep into that in the future but right now that's as comfortable as i am going into that level of depth so then as i mentioned earlier i'd probably spend 100 bucks a month on gas so i bumped it up 50 and i spent about 70 bucks a month on internet so i've added that here so you can see that gets us out to about three thousand dollars a month on living expenses and so that means about thirty six thousand dollars a year in passive income i need now you may have noticed this didn't really include a lot of trips or vacations an idealized lifestyle, I probably would take those on occasion. So I'm going to create a $200 a month uh, reserve fund for that and adjust for that as well. So then that gets us to closer to $3,200, $3,300 a month in total lifestyle expenses. Or you can think of that as about $39,000, let's call it $40,000 a year on my lifestyle. So that means I need to create $40,000 a year in order to maintain the current lifestyle I have. And so that's where I think my YouTube channel is gonna start getting really interesting. I plan to document for you guys a new series of videos how I would go about trying to create that $40,000 a year in passive or semi-passive income. And not only that, I guess one of the biggest frustrations I had with a lot of the early retirement community, as well as a lot of the books I read on the subject is, it still almost always focuses on strategy and not tactics. And I get it, I understand why, because it's very difficult to talk to a wide audience and provide specific tactics that's gonna apply all across North America, let alone all across the world. And I get that. But the beauty of what I'm doing here is I don't have to have the widest audience. So I can afford to be more niche, really delve into uh, areas that others haven't done before. And I think that's, I'm hoping that's what's gonna provide you guys value. In an upcoming series of videos, I'm going to be documenting for you guys how I would go about trying to create $40,000 in passive income. God damn it. So, that being said, on an upcoming series of videos, I plan to document for you guys exactly how I'd try and recreate that $40,000 a year in passive or semi-passive income. Not only that, but I'm going to show you how I would do it with a portfolio of a million dollars in assets, a portfolio of $500,000 in assets, and how I would try and do it with a portfolio of $250,000 in assets. So I'm hoping to essentially kind of document for you a much more traditional uh, retirement plan versus what's kind of considered a lean fire or an early retirement extreme passive income portfolio. Or maybe semi-passive, I may throw in some real estate there as well. And smash that like button if you got value from this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and be sure to share this on social media. Do I need to make money from these videos? No, but they are taking up a huge chunk of my free time. And for me to continue doing it, I need to at least know that I'm making an impact on some of you guys and I'm influencing you, that I'm helping you strive to reach your goals. And so the best way to do that is by hitting the like button, by subscribing, by sharing this with your friends and by commenting in the comment section below. All right, thanks for taking the time to watch this guys. Until next time, remember, making money is a team sport there's more than enough money out there for us to all make it. So let's just go make some money, guys. Thanks. Bye.